Hey everybody, it's Adam from Lucid Pixel, and welcome to this week's Art Talk. I'm going to work on a different sketch today. I'm starting over a new sketch. Unfortunately, I can't walk you through the other one because I thought you could benefit from seeing how how uh, uh, a professional doesn't just nail it on the first shot. Sometimes you have to go through it a couple of times to get it right, right? So I thought you could benefit from that, but for what it's worth. Today I want to talk about something that triggers me, something that gets under my skin. And I don't think it's because the the artists and, and professionals online that talk about this stuff have any ill intent or are trying to mislead people or are trying to give off false impressions. I think it's because they are victims to a certain culture that we all are. Um, and what bothers me is that this culture finds its way into artistry, which to me is a sacred field of practice because I've always cherished artists and I cherish myself as being free thinking people that can question the norm and can and can see beyond the you know the the common rabble they can see beyond you know the the very industrialized approach towards lifestyle and take on their own beliefs and their own understandings of things and fashion lifestyles that that work around that and that's the whole culture of burning yourself out to succeed. Now, this is a topic that many artists have talked about and something that I've kind of dabbled in. I've kind of hinted at it in other earlier art talks going back years. But um, I really want to get to the meat and potatoes of this conversation because I want to give you guys a real, really realistic and non-dramatized um, perspective on what burning yourself out, what that, what that unreasonable quantity of workload that you put on yourself or believe that you need to do, what that will and can do to you. And the unfortunate truth about this, I, I've learned from being on this planet for several decades, now that I'm a more senior artist, I've seen how this actually has the opposite effect on an artist's desires to grow um, that they want. You you sacrifice so much in the name of artistic growth. And in fact, those who put, who don't do that, who don't push themselves to that extreme, actually find themselves growing more. They get more benefit, they get more growth. And this can lead to a lot of animosity and discouragement because then you end up completely misinterpreting this. I know because I've been there. So what I want to talk about is artists out there, any artist out there, and there's many of them out there that talk about the need, the necessity to pour in 10, 12, 14 hours of work every single day, day after day, seven days a week. And you have to keep just working and grinding and grinding and grinding. I've heard this from so many artists and some of these artists are real seasoned, idolized professionals. And that's where it really pisses me off the most. Again, not an attack on them personally, because like I said, they're victims as much as the next person is. But they, they advocate for this very unhealthy lifestyle and basically say, hey, if you don't jump, if you don't get on the boat with everybody else, if you don't, if you want to find growth, you've got to do this too. You've got to work 12. I worked 12, 14 hours a day. All I did was work. I, that's all I did every day for the first, you know, seven years of my career. And I saw all of my competition fall way behind me. And I was the one who got all the jobs and I'm the one who got all the gigs and I'm the one who got all the fame. And they, they kept sitting around complaining, why am I not finding any growth? Well, it's because they didn't make the sacrifice. And I'm sitting there listening to that as, you know, a 40 year old artist, a senior who has found success and who has found prof uh, professional growth. And my blood boils because I'm sitting there going, you're not only wrong, but you're also encouraging artists that look up to you, that respect you, that believe what you're saying is the way to go you are pushing them down a path that isn't only not going to prove to be as fruitful as they hope for, but they're going to be sacrificing more than just their time. They're going to be sacrificing their health, their social life, their mental well-being, their physical well-being. 
And I'm not exaggerating here. I've seen it. I have experienced this. It's a wrong way to think. What do I mean by this? Okay, well, let's, let's actually, uh, I'm going to demonstrate to you. I'm going to give you a visual on what actually happens. Let's break it down into the different facets. Let's just start with time. Okay, just time. Forget about all the other aspects of your life. Just time. You're sacrificing, you're putting in 14 hours a day into your artistic trade because your goal is to be the best artist out there. You're going to beat the competition. 14 hours a day, every single day, 12, even 12, 10, even I find is somewhat unreasonable. But you know what I mean? You're putting that much time into it. Okay, so you get ahead of the race. You're better than everybody else. You're in your early 20s. You've got a good gig. Um, you're making a decent salary. What do you do then? Now that you've got the gig, you got hired on the premise that you were ready and willing to put that kind of time and energy into your work every day. Well, now sustain it. Keep it going. We hired you because of your dedication and your selflessness and your unrelenting energy that you put towards your work, your time and energy that you put towards your work. You got the job. There you go. You've got what it takes. You've got the job. Now keep it going. For how long? Well, as long as you want the job. <laughs> so what you, what you just did to prove yourself is now your curse. Because now, regardless of how you feel, regardless of your energy, regardless of your dedication, if you don't sustain it, if you don't keep pretending to be a superhero for the next 10 years, well, your career's not going to last very long. So are you just going to stop? Of course you're not going to stop. You just sacrificed the last 5, 10 years of your life to get there. Now you're there. What are you going to do? Give it up? Of course not. So you push yourself harder and harder and harder and harder and harder and harder. And as you do this, your body, your mind, and everything else, every other physical facet of your body, every other emotional facet of your being starts to deteriorate. And I mean but deteriorate, physically deteriorate. You're hunched over a desk for 14 hours a day? Sure. Maybe when you're in your teens, in your early 20s. Maybe, but not usually. Your back is fine. You know, you, you can sit down for long periods of time. It's fine. You're okay. You can get up and go do your thing and hang out with your friends and you come back and you sit down again. That's fine. But you do that for five years. Your muscles start to adapt to that new structure. Your spine starts to adapt to, your, to that stru structure. Your cervical and your thoracic spine start to bend out of shape the, because the muscles are all out of whack. That starts to put pressure on your organs. That starts to put pressure on the back of your legs because you're sitting down 24 hours, you know, 12 hours a day. There's zero circulation happening in the back of your legs because the back of your legs are getting more stretched from being in a sitting position. Your quad muscles start to tighten. Every time you stand up, that puts pressure on your on your lower spine, which pulls on your lower spine and that starts to create back curve. That back curve leads itself all the way up into the back of your neck. You end up having to go and get MRIs. Of course you do. Why? Because you start you start getting pains and you can't feel you can't feel certain spots on your back and you get piercing pains. You can't sit for longer than 15 minutes because you feel like you've got a hot poker sticking right into your kidneys. That's how bad the pain gets. I'm speaking from experience here, guys. Okay? You end up with, if, if you're in Canada, you're lucky because you've got Medicare. But if you're in the States, you're screwed. Now think about it. Which organs are in your tummy? You've got liver, you've got pancreas, you've got kidneys, you've got intestines, you've got your heart, you've got your lungs, you've got your gallbladder, okay, etc., etc. You've got all of these organs in there. Well, you sit down for 14 hours a day. You cannot sit straight for 14 hours a day. You can't do it. You end up hunched over your desk. That's putting pressure on all of your organs. When you put constant pressure on your organs, that starts to affect the way your body metabolizes things. It starts to affect the way they function. You're not getting any exercise, so your lungs start to atrophy. When your endocrine system is impacted by poor lifestyle habits, if you're not getting exercise, you're not getting proper nutrition, you're not moving around, you're putting constant pressure on your organs, when your endocrine system goes, that attacks every single molecule on your body. Your thyroid, which is 
connected to your endocrine system. It's a feedback loop. Your liver speaks to your thyroid, speaks to your hypothalamus, speaks to your pituitary gland, back and forth. If one thing goes, it's got, it's got a kinetic impact on every single organ in your body. When your thyroid goes, everything goes. Your energy, your focus, your muscles start to deteriorate. Your, your, you start to gain weight uncontrollably, despite now making an effort to because you realize your your body weight just shot up 40 pounds out of nowhere bang okay you go to the gym it's too late for that your muscles are so out of tone you don't have the muscle tone to be able to burn fat and your thyroid's now messing around with you every single facet of you you can't think straight you start getting you start your digestion your digestion starts to get lethargic your skin you start getting skin problems and hair falling out and all kinds of stuff like this this is what happens to late 30, 40 year olds when they don't take proper care of themselves. Okay. I'm just talking about the physical sides of things. If that enough is not enough to scare you, what about the social side of your life? Sure. Okay. You're ahead of the game. You're, 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 you've got the big job and, and your work, work, work. Well, you got to keep that work method going. But while you were doing that, a lot of your peers out there that might not be at quite that level you're at yet took some time to go and hang out with their friends took some time to go out and have a coffee or go grab a drink with their friends they did that you didn't so you might be mr successful but you're not mr popular right because you haven't developed any freaking social skills you spent your entire life hiding behind a book now of course we're artists and we make friends other fellow artists and stuff like that but it's amazing how many artists I know that don't necessarily have the social skills to be able to go out and just hang out with people. It's a very basic skill, one that we need to cultivate. One, it's, it's Your social skills are something you need to develop. You can't just become popular out of nowhere. You have to go out and make friends. You have to learn how to smile and open up a conversation with people. That doesn't only impact your relationships, that affects your jobs. It's amazing working as a director at EA, okay, or working as a director at different studios. How many artists I would see that would walk in that they had gorgeous artwork, gorgeous artwork, like, woo, really nice stuff. And I brought them in for the interview to interview them, and they had the social skills of rocks, okay? I'd, I'd go, wow, you've really got nice work. I love, you know, this piece over here is really, really nice. And what about that piece? And they're like, thanks. Why don't you talk about this piece? Fine. Right there, I'm calling the next guy. You've lost you've lost your chances, okay? If you don't even know how to smile and say something nice, then screw you. You're not going to get the job. I have to... Remember, when you get hired for a job, you get hired not only because you have got... If you get... if I'll put it to you this way. If you get a job interview, your artwork's already good enough. You're not being interviewed for your art. You're getting interviewed for your personality. And if you've got no personality because you spent the first 20 years of your life sitting behind a book, you're not going to get a job because people, they're trying to figure out if, they, if you're somebody they can work with. If you're not an asshole, if you're not, you know, antisocial, you can't be antisocial in a work environment. You've got to be able to make friends. When shit gets, when shit hits the fan, when things get stressful in a studio, when they start doing layoffs, who do you think are the first people to go? The people that were less popular, the people who were less sociable, the people who didn't connect with other people as well. If you want to get a professional job working independently, starting your own YouTube channel, starting a school, starting a mentorship, any of that kind of stuff, you need to be able to learn how to communicate with people. So you need to get out there. You need to be able to hang out with friends. You need to be able to share your stress, stresses and your day-to-day -day stuff with other people. Don't Put every single egg into a single basket and expect to have a perfect life out of that. It won't. You'll have the skill, but everything else is going to pay the price for that. Now, let's get to the real meat and potatoes of this conversation. And that is your artistic growth. I, I, can, I feel I can best summarize how I feel about artistic growth by quoting... Jeff Cavalier from Athlean X. I, I watch that guy all the time. I absolutely love him. I love the way he trains. I love the way he thinks. I love his attitude. I love the way he teaches. In one of his recent videos he just posted, he said, do you lift what you can or what you should? 
A lot of guys go into the gym and it's all about their ego. They go and they grab some crazy weight, you know, like, you know, I can lift 250 pounds, raw, bang, bang, bang. Okay, you know, the meatheads that walk into gyms, you see them all the time, right? And you look at them and you look at what they're doing and you can tell, number one, they have no idea about human, human anatomy because they're, they're freaking all over the place. They don't know where their arms from their legs are. They're just lifting a bunch of shit over their head and they don't even know what muscles are engaged in that process. So there's no thought put into what they're doing. Number two, they're pushing their muscles to a limit that will inevitably, their form and the weight that they're lifting is completely wrong. So they're going to end up injuring themselves. When you injure yourself, well, forget having a nice body <laughs> because you're going to be at a commission for a long time, if not permanently, depending on, on the severity of that injury. Third, they're not getting any quality growth. I've seen guys go to the gym that, 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 you know, lift crazy weights every single day and you see them 15 years later and you, you barely see any difference in them. It's the same body. And that's because they had no discipline. They had no focus. They had no direction with the way they were training. But you look at another guy and he's lifting one, one quarter of what that other guy's lifting, but he's sweating, he's focused. You can tell he's engaging that muscle, that head of that muscle. He studied his anatomy. He knows exactly what muscles, what muscles are responsible for what kind of thing. He focuses on balance. He focuses on making sure that he's not only focusing on the superficial muscles, but the deeper, more important muscles that hold the whole structure together. And you might look at them and say, Jesus, if at that pace, the guy's never going to find any kind of gains. Yeah? Look at them five years later, and they look 10 times better than everybody else in the gym because they knew how to train properly. They focused on doing it properly. They were lifting what they should, not what they could. And the same thing applies to artistic focus. If you don't believe me, I want you to go and check out a couple of videos by Jeff Watts from the Watts Atelier. He's got a bunch of videos online, okay? I love listening to him paint while I'm working. And I love being influenced by his thought process in the way that he teaches. And what he, one of the main things that he talks about is focus. Art requires an intense amount of focus. This is something I teach to my students all the time. How to see values properly, how to see colors properly, how to see form properly, how to mark a line, how to judge form, how to get, how to properly observe shapes and textures in order to capture the likeness of something. Okay. Learning not only from my own work, but for learning from the masters. Look at artists like Frank Frazetta. Look at Watts. Look at all of these artists that were, are well known for their incredible quality and focus and professionalism. That kind of focus cannot exist over an unreasonably extended period of time. That kind of focus burns a lot of calories. It burns a lot of energy. You can't do that for 12 hours. You simply can't. Can you go to the gym and lift weight for 12 hours? Of course not. If you can expect that, if you can't expect that of your biceps, what makes you think you can expect that of your brain? To think that you can keep that pace up and see proper gains? No, it's about focusing properly over a concentrated period of time and when you start to feel that your brain starts to go into automatic mode because it's getting fatigued, you step the hell away from your drawing table. You give yourself a break. You can think about it. You can go and make yourself a coffee. You can hang out with your friends. You can, you can watch some random YouTube video. You can play some video games and you can think about art and all that kind of stuff. But give your mind and your hands a break. And it's in, in that break that you're doing some, you do heavy thinking, you do reflection on your work. You can come back and revisit it and give yourself a fresh perspective on your artwork and go, okay, what works and doesn't work about this piece? Do I need to start over? Are my colors right? Do I need to scratch this and st scrap this and start something else? I want to focus on the leg here. I want to get that leg right. So you go and you put some hyper, hyper focus into the muscles of that arm, the wrist, the thumb bones and you get right deep into it. You put a lot of thoughtful concentration, thoughtful effort into, the, into your hand-to-eye coordination in order to execute that line with confidence. You can't do it, try it again, try it again, try it again, try it again, until eventually it starts to become fluid. It starts to become muscle memory. You can start to, de it takes less energy to draw that hand. Next time you'll be able to pull it off in one shot and you can move your mind off onto the next thing. And then the next thing. And that's where quality 
growth comes from. Am I a robot? No, I'm a human being who believes in quality. I have long-term goals. I plan on doing this for the next 50, 60 years. I plan on painting when I'm 95. I want to be the David Attenborough of artists that is in his, he's in his nineties and he still travels the world and takes, you know, deep sea submersibles and does documentaries. That guy's in shape because he has balance. He, he's not in that kind of shape. He doesn't have that kind of mental clarity and that kind of success at this very late point in his life, because all he does is hit the grindstone 24 hours a day. No. He gets his sunlight. He goes out and has a nice meal. He socializes. He ha takes a chance to do things that he loves. He's passionate about what he does. You can tell. But he takes a break. And when you look at him, you don't see a burnout. You see a happy, healthy man. That's what I want to be when I'm his age. I want to be a guy who can teach with that level of energy. And that phys I want my body to be in the same shape his is at that age, if not better. In order to do that, I have, I had to learn the art of pacing myself, of quality gains versus just trying to show off and flex. Because if you lift those heavy weights every single day for 12 hours a day for the next two decades, you'll, you'll, you will have burned yourself out. You will have gotten, you will have, you could push yourself into some kind of a depression. Uh, your body's going to be in so much pain. You won't be able to sit down for longer than 15 minutes without having to get up. You'll have to get physiotherapists, all that money. <laughs> that your earning is going to have to go back into repairing your body, right? So take care of your health. Pace yourself with your artwork. Does that mean never ever work 12 hour day? No, I do that once in a while. Once in a while. But I don't do it every single day. Sometimes I'm just in the zone and I'm enjoying myself. And I just don't want to let it go. Cool, that's fine. But I don't do it every day. And if I find myself getting into a routine of getting kind of over, over caught up into my work, I stop myself. I stop myself because I know if I keep doing this for the next two weeks, I'm going to injure myself some way, or I'm going to cause some kind of a long-term stress injury, or I'm going to start feeling like shit. So I stop and I go to the gym. I go to the gym every single day. I exercise every single day. I hang out with my kids. I play some Dark Souls. I watch some TV. I relax. I get some fresh air and play outside in the sun or the snow. That's how I live my life. Every healthy, successful person you know in the world is there because they've learned the most important element to living a healthy life, balance. Okay. So yes, it's a rant, handle it. So hopefully you enjoyed today's art talk. Um, thank you again to everybody who was so beautifully supportive. And I, if I didn't mention last week's, uh, last week's art talk where I was talking about, uh, manga, uh, somebody, uh, somebody got in touch with me to correct my pronunciation of manga. Um, uh, I went out to check out, I checked out Your Name, the, the movie Your Name, which is beautiful. Holy smokes. Um, I do have, I could do a review on it, the pros and cons, uh, but overall it was just a beautiful movie and I'm going to go check, I'm going to be checking out a lot of your suggestions as well moving forward because a lot of you, a lot of you guys uh, clued me in on some great movies to check out. So I've got this long laundry list of movies to check out. So thank you very much for that and for all your support on the video. Um, and remember, I put out an art talk slash behind the scenes every single Monday. And don't forget as well, I have my art critiques every single Thursday. Uh, again, I'm going to be posting those between 2 and 4 p.m. Eastern time. Um, and if you want your own artwork, uh, if you want to submit your own artwork for critique, don't forget to subscribe. And you can check out the information in the description below on how to submit your artwork. And of course, my online art mentorship, Lucid Pixel. You can check out all of that in the description below as well. So thank you for joining me, everybody. I love you all. Happy painting, happy balanced lifestyle. And I'll see you in the next one next week. Take care.